good afternoon from the cave. Okay, I've had a, 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 a quite a few people that send me messages um, say they, they want to start tying pike flies, which is fantastic. So I'm going to show you a really, really easy way to tie a good looking but basic pike fly. Um, very, very easy to do. If you want to start tying flies for pike, this is one of the patterns you can use. It won't cost you a lot to do. Okay, so material wise, I'm going to use pretty much the synthetic hair you can get off many websites these days. Um, eBay and the likes, fly tie materials, sites and people like Deer Creek, um, Silver Scales Fly Fishing, Fly Tying, they do it. Um, I think the Deer Creek one with this, you can actually, it's called Glisten Glint Plus. Uh, which is a really nice one if you're starting out because it's already got the flash built into that. Um, so if you wanted a flashy, a flashy fly, then head to Deer Creek to get that. Um, so what do we do? Well, material-wise, we have the the hair as you've seen. Uh, Hook-wise, I've got a, a 60 CZT white gape. Um, what's a CZT? It's basically the hook that I I use. I import available on the website, and that's it there. Very sharp, nice wide gap there, um, you know, because if you're using bulky materials, you don't want that to be like covered up in bulk because you may actually miss bites with that. Um, nice shank size, get a good size, you know, you can get 11, 12 inch fly on that, no problem whatsoever. Okay, thread wise, um, I like to use a clear mono. Um, you can get, again, get this on the internet, you can get a Danville, does a, a really good um, clear mono. Uh, this is pretty much a, an invisible sewn thread I like to use. It does break easy, so you have to have some knowledge of your, your break points, um, you know, so you know where it's going to break and stuff. But if it's only for you, then yeah, sure, just use whatever you like, thread-wise, whatever you've got, you know. Okay, so start tying on. Um, I'm going to tie pretty much to there, um, and that's it. So we'll start up here. And then come all the way down and you can see the gap that's where the material is going to go okay so material i'm going to start off with again i'm using quite a colorful one uh, just so you can see this quite easy so we're going to take a, a small length for this and i'm going to do a skinny bait fish today so take a length for that and that measures oh, 10 inches okay who uh, misses Okay, so cutting that off, and uh, there's your piece of material, and I'm just going to taper that just by holding it in one hand, thumb and forefinger, and pulling it through with the other, and then placing it back on top. Again, if you want to mix flash in here, you put your flash in at this point, and you can mix it in by doing the same method, like so. Okay, so there we have quite a nice tapered fishy type shape. So I'm just going to put some varnish on. You can put super glue on if you want. I tend not to use super glues. Um, old wives tell maybe that the fish could smell it. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. But yeah, this is a method I've always done. Okay, so your material, you've put your, uh, your varnish on. Fold your material over. So you want the underneath wants to be shorter than the back piece, like so. Okay, and we place that on. So with your thumb and forefinger, just wiggle that round so your material is down on both sides of the hook shank. And what we do is we give that a few wraps, secure that on the varnish, like so. Okay. And then we bring it up a little bit. And what you want to do here is half the material on either side of the hook eye, just like so. When you've done that, we can fold it either side of the bend of the hook, like so. Okay. And then we're going to give that a couple of wraps. Tighten that down. And that's your first piece on. That wasn't difficult. And it's pretty much the same every method, um, every step we do here. Okay, so what I do now to protect against uh, teeth, and to make stuff stick together 
as I apply some varnish on that. Now we're going to go on and we're going to put the next piece on, which surprisingly is another piece of this. Okay. We're going to use the darker one in the end step for this. And you'll see why. This is this is many, many years of trial and error, you know, working out the best way to do stuff and that, you know. Um, so again, we'll take another piece about 10 inch. And the same thing, we taper, like so. Okay, so again, we fold it over, but this time you want the bottom piece to be shorter than the last bottom piece you put on, and the back piece to be slightly longer. So we put this on over the top. Thumb and forefinger, push down a little bit, and a couple of wraps. Uh, we bring that pretty much right up to the hook eye. Like so. And then split. And push back. And a few wraps on there. Don't worry about a wee lump at the end there. It's just aesthetic, it's not going to affect anything, but it will go down when you wrap like so. Okay, let me just check. And they, I mean, I mean, to be honest, that's pretty good bait fish <laughs> imitation there already. Um, this, this particular pattern is really good if you fish um, venues like canals um, or even in salt water where there's you know, in canals, you might get big shoals of roach. Um, this is pretty much, you know, for my locals, that's pretty much about the big size or well, the size of roach you get and the big shoals swimming about kind of like a matcha hatch. Um, sea fishing wise, these, these flies are a perfect size for bass as well. Um, bass will inhale these. Just, they love them. Okay, so off track a bit there. So we take, again, a little bit of varnish and all around the top. This will soak in to this material. So, are we struggling a bit there? Just pull it off. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to put uh, a little bit of flash in. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of pearl, just a nice iridescent flash. So I'm using. That's going to be coming at that's about eight inches. So what I can do with that is just taper that end, just pull that out like so. Place on top. What this does, this just gives a tiny, tiny wee bit of flash in your fly. You can go overboard if you want. We all know how good. Uh, the flash flies work. If you're a follower of my Instagram, you'll see that my Robert the Roach pattern is just nailing fish around the UK, left, right, and centre. Um, and that's a full flash fly. Sometimes full flash doesn't work, it'll put fish off. You know, you have to get them on the right day. Subtle flies will work some days, some days they won't. You know, so it's just uh, changing stuff about until you know the, you, you find what they actually want. Okay, so we're going to go for a darker, darker green. Okay, and again, this one comes out about nine inches, this one. Yep, I know it's a little bit short on the back. Let's we'll see what I'm going to do. So we're going to pull that out. Just give it a little bit of a, a taper. Just keep pulling at it until you're, you're happy with both ends. Yep. Looks like good to me. So what I'm going to do now is place that right there like so. I'm going to look at the fly and I can see that it's a little bit straight there. I don't like straight lines on flies because it's not really natural. Um, I like to have a, a nice taper. So that works quite well like that. Okay. And then we that on. Again the varnish underneath as you're tying this down 
putting pressure on like so the varnish you've put on will actually seep up into the layers okay all right and then we fold that bit back hold down just try and get it so you're going wrap next to wrap and then come back Broke the thread, not a problem. If you break your thread like that, just go to the back, put a couple of wraps on, cut there, take your straggly bit and tie that in. That's how you fix a broken thread, quite easy. Okay. Because this mono is like, it's only about maybe one or two pound in breaking strain okay so that's pretty much um, your fly what I like to do sorry I touched the camera there is just add a little bit of heat to that if you add a little bit of heat just on the eye there what that'll do it'll come down through that little bit of shank there And it'll actually melt inside where your material is so that will actually make that stick to the hook have a good wee tip there and a little bit of varnish pretty much makes that invisible okay so i'm going to put some eyes on now so we're going to use um 12 millimeter and we're going to go for a 12 mil red because the red and the green always look great and I'm going to epoxy this I'll show you how the epoxy works okay so with the epoxy you only need the tiniest amount Unless you're commercial time like I do, and then I'll use uh, quite a lot. But for this, you only need to get a Z epoxy, great epoxy, when you can get it out the tube. Okay, I'll show you the amounts once I've poured them. Being Scottish, I don't like waste. Okay, can you see that's the amount? And even that's going to be too much, you know? Right, so we've got our eyes to one side, um, and I use uh, just a dubbing brush, um, a dubbing needle, like so, um, for my epoxy in. So we'll just gently mix that. You don't need to be too uh, gentle with this because it's not going to form a head around it. So if you keep, if you mix epoxy, this. What you're going to do is trap air bubbles in there and when the epoxy dries you'll see the air bubbles. But if you don't want air bubbles when you mix it, if you just go gently and try not to take your needle out and that will stop the bubbles forming. Okay so I know roughly where my eye is going to go um, because I do so many of these. So this put the epoxy, this is a five minute so good working time. If you're doing a few of them, a 30 minute epoxy is quite good. Okay, so that's roughly where my eye's going to sit. Now I'm going to take some more and I'm going to push it through the material. Like so. same on the other side what this does it gives you um, quite a good solid 
head in there for the eyes to stick to. And also help, it also helps weight in the fly. Okay, and then I always put a little bit extra on the top just for good luck. And then some. to make that bomb proof. Just put some on top there again. Okay. Okay. Then hold your eye of your epoxy. Push down. And there you have A pretty good little bait fish. Not too hard at all. Uh, believe believe you me, anybody can do that. Uh, the one thing I'd say is just make sure not to use too much material. The biggest mistake I see is people use too much material to start off. Um, you know, and it just doesn't look good. Uh, certainly in the case of this stuff, uh, it's definitely less is more. Okay. Um, at the end of the video you'll see uh, the links to where I get this from um, and you can go and visit the, the local shops. Um, if you're in the States um, just get in touch with your local fly tire, uh, sorry fly, fly shop, you have a lot more choice over there than we do here. Um, Caster's Fly Shop, uh, Dave Heiss, is a really really good source of material for, um, for Deer Creek. Um, but again, support support your local shops, people. You know, um, and that's that. But like this, I've just done this in this colour just to show you, um, so you can see the fly. But it's a, it's a really good colour that it's um, it catches a lot of fish. Um, if you get a pen, you can put stripes on that, no problem at all. Get a permanent marker, get your sharpies out. Um, colour wise, let your imagination run free. Um, colour wise, uh, you know, do what you want to do. It's uh, it's a great fly and it will catch you a lot of fish. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, then you'll see the link to my website. Um, head on over there and you'll see lots of flies made with the same stuff, made with the same stuff. If you go to the front page, if you've enjoyed my video, scroll down to the bottom. You can buy the Viking a beer.